Hey everyone, and welcome back to the galaxy. Today we will be learning more about the Warp Transform tool. This tool lets us create many different types of warping on our canvas. You can even animate these warps right in the tool options. First, I will select the Warp Transform tool. Let's start with the different warps this tool can create. The drop-down menu at the top of the tool options consists of seven different modes. Move Pixels moves the object in the direction your mouse moves. As I click and drag, the pixels of this image are pushed right along with my mouse. Grow Area creates a grow effect as you click and drag. As you move your mouse, more of the effect gets applied. This can be used to make objects bigger. Shrink area does the opposite of grow and makes what you are clicking on smaller. Swirl clockwise and counterclockwise both create similar motions. Swirl clockwise will create a swirl that goes in a clockwise direction to the right. while Swirl Counterclockwise will create a swirl that goes in a counterclockwise direction to the left. Erase Warping returns the object to its original state as you click. This option will get rid of previous warping in the area you apply your brush. Smooth Warping helps to smooth out warps you've created. This mode works a little bit like the Erase Warping mode and makes transformations less severe. Beneath these options, we can adjust how our brush behaves on the canvas. Here we can adjust the size of the brush, the hardness, which will create a smoother transformation as we decrease the slider bar, or harsh edges as we increase it. Strength determines how much effect we get as we click. See the difference between a low amount and a high amount. Spacing is best demonstrated with the Move Pixels option selected. Spacing determines the spaces your brush jumps as you create a stroke. If I increase this value, see how choppy this stroke looks as I drag my cursor around the canvas. The value on this slider bar is the amount of pixels the brush will jump as you drag it along. Now if I decrease this value, the stroke is much more fluid as I drag it along the canvas. Interpolation deals with the quality of the image as you transform. Often, leaving this set to cubic is satisfactory. I have linked more information about this option in the description if you are interested. Abyss Policy tells the tool how to fill transparent areas that may be created by transformations. If I keep this selected to None, as I click and warp this corner, you can start to see transparency, almost as if I'm peeling back a page. If we select Clamp, it creates a continuation of the object, and as I select this option, that previous transparent portion is now filled with an extension of the image. If we select Loop, it tries to repeat parts of the image to fill the gap. This can be good for images with patterns, but you can see this method creates an awkward design in the gap. Out of these options, I would choose Clamp, because it creates the most fluid blend. Under Abyss Policy, we have options for real-time previews. High Quality Preview creates a more accurate preview of the transformation, but may put extra strain on your computer. Real-time preview creates a fluid preview of your transformation on the canvas. 
The options under stroke determine when the transformation will be applied. With both of these options unticked, we are unable to make changes on our canvas. With during motion ticked, the transformation will apply as we click. To use periodically, first uncheck during motion. Periodically allows you to define how often you want the stroke to activate. With this set at a lower value, as I move the mouse around, transformations are applied at a slower rate. See how the effect seems choppy. If we set this higher, it becomes more fluid and smooth. Finally, we have an option to animate our transformation. We can set the amount of frames we want the animation to have, with fewer frames being a more choppy animation and more frames being more smooth. I will set mine to 20, and then we can click Create Animation. It's going to create a bunch of layers, each with a different frame of transformation. To preview this animation, go up to Filters, Animation, Playback. The animation will be created from your current session changes with this tool. If I click this play icon, we can see some of the recent changes I just made. And you have now mastered the Warp Transform tool. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, consider subscribing for more awesome content. Let us know if you found this tutorial helpful by liking this video and leaving us a comment. Thanks for watching.